Welcome everyone who has joined us. This is Ukraine Media Center at Ukraine Forum. It is at the ninth year of the war at 222nd day of our fight for our freedom. We are grateful to the journalists telling the truth about this fight. Right now we are going to discuss the preparation for the winter heating season. Uh, we are going to speak with Alexei Chernyshov, Minister for Communities and Territories Development. Hello. Alexei, uh, um, to which extent are our regions ready for the beginning of the heating season? Let us discuss the challenges ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for this uh, subject. It is indeed very relevant, not only in Ukraine, but also all around Europe. Uh, this year the heating season is uh, very challenging and uh, these are uh, the parameters we have to work in. So if you permit I will uh, briefly present the main uh, stages of uh, preparation for the heating season. So the preparations have started in advance. Actually they usually uh, start after uh, the end of the previous heating season. For all the year the community were getting ready for the next winter season and so we have to point out right now that the level of uh, preparedness of uh, all the equipments and networks of uh, the um, uh, housing infrastructure uh, it's about 97 uh, percent um, ready on average in Ukraine. So we are planning at the forthcoming meeting of our headquarters which is going to take place on the 4th of October. We are going to announce uh, the 100 percent readiness of all the systems for the heating season. So what are the challenges and what are the differences? Uh, the thing I have presented now is uh, the work we were doing each year in the cities uh, getting ready uh, with the systems of centralized heating and uh, hot water supply. Uh, this year uh, the challenges are the availability of resources which are natural gas and coal and the second one is the destructions that have already happened because of the aggression and uh, the damage that can potentially happen in terms of critical infrastructure. If you permit I would like to begin with the first issue, the availability of resources, uh, which is very challenging not only for Ukraine but also for the uh, countries of uh, Western Europe even. So Ukraine worked quite closely uh, on uh, getting ready uh, the uh, stores of natural gas. Our intention is to have about four and a half billion cubic meters of natural gas. We have already amassed about 14 billion, so we are close to the target number. Also this year we are intending to uh, get ready with the unprecedented volume of coal. We plan to have 2.5 million tons of it. And also we are right now approaching at the number of 2 million of the coal that's actually available. So if we uh, count uh, the warehouses uh, of uh, the enterprises and other places where coal is kept. So uh, in terms of resources we are quite ready for the heating season. And speaking of the infrastructure condition, we know that the, um, well, at, at least 350 uh, boiler uh, uh, houses were damaged. Uh, the damage continues, we understand it's not the end yet, but 
the work has been done in advance in the occupied uh, regions. We uh, are seeing a recovery of the heating infrastructure for uh, the uh, uh, last months. Akhterka, Kremenchuk and Chernihiv are the major locations uh, funded from the budget. The uh, recovery there will be completed, so the heat will be available in the beginning of the winter season. Next we have uh, uh, Kharkiv uh, thermal power plant, uh, which is uh, going to be restored according to the schedule as well. So we have developed uh, the crisis response plans at the level of uh, each uh, of the reasons. Uh, in some places uh, they uh, were uh, already uh, fully implemented and uh, I'm sure that the regions are ready for such challenges. Hopefully we will not uh, see many of them happening. So you were speaking about Kharkiv region and we understand that thanks to our military Kharkiv region has almost entirely been liberated but uh, is there uh, uh, any chance that in some places it will not be possible to resume heating season and if uh, this will happen do you advise people to evacuate from those places temporarily if the infrastructure has been damaged by the occupiers. Well, we, we need to keep every Ukrainian warm and these are not just words, it's our real goal. Uh, you're right about the deoccupied uh, parts of Kharkiv region. We have specialized commissions from the Ministry of Regional uh, Development, Social Policy, etc. Wherever possible, uh, the heating season will be resumed and Ukrainians will be kept warm. Right now, active work is underway to resume gas supply to the territories of uh, Donetsk uh, uh, region. We are working quite closely on this issue and surely wherever in those communities or territories where central heating will not be uh, provided and there will be no opportunity to uh, provide heating to uh, apartment buildings we recommend those uh, communities to choose another approach there is a working group uh, guided by the Vice Prime Minister, uh, Ms. Verishchuk, and uh, the evacuation will be happening from such locations, but once again, uh, this winter we intend to keep every Ukrainian warm, and this will be accomplished. Now, speaking of uh, the uh, owners of uh, single-family houses will they be supported by the government uh, by means of uh, uh, supplies of uh, coal or firewood or whatever uh, yes yes wherever there is access to natural gas first and foremost it will be delivered and provided we know that uh, the uh, price of natural gas is uh, for now being uh, kept uh, stable by the government and wherever there are some challenges with gas availability we will uh, stimulate the communities to support uh, their uh, population and uh, the necessary support will be provided through uh, military civil administrations uh, by means of supporting people with firewood or other forms of fuel. Alexey, do you have any advice for our citizens? We understand that not everything depends on the government. Some steps need to be made by each and every one of us. So what can this be? 
Well, speaking of advice, I have only one advice. Please consume responsibly. Uh, we have to be careful with the natural resources we have. Right now, Russia has uh, basically announced war, which uh, has an energy component in it. And natural gas is uh, the Russia's weapon. So we have to be very careful when using it. And actually, the role of uh, the government right now is to make sure that the resource is available. Natural gas, first and foremost. And then this gas has to be delivered to the cities uh, by the uh, regional administrations. So uh, the heat needs to be produced and delivered to uh, people's apartments. Uh, meanwhile, the citizens uh, have to be very uh, careful in uh, their uh, consumption. So uh, the ministry has developed very uh, simple and useful advice. We know that other institutions are also getting ready with the same. So the idea is, if you live in an apartment, in an apartment building, you need to test your windows making sure that uh, your windows and your doors are uh, protecting the heat in in your living place also the the roofs if they are uh, sealed well so these are simple things but they have to be at work we need to get ready with uh, those elements of preparation also, we need to be ready, and I, I hope that this will not happen, but if uh, there is any limitation or temporary halt of a uh, heat supply, you also need to understand what uh, is going to happen in such a situation. There need to be a room prepared before and you need to cooperate with your neighbors, etc. But the main thing is to be uh, very uh, frugal uh, this year. So this is an element of the military operation. In, as in essence, we have to be uh, very uh, careful with our electricity and gas consumption. And if we save, uh, we will all uh, be warm in winter, we will have enough uh, light. We need to do away with the habits of the past where people simply didn't uh, count uh, their energy costs. We need to forget about open windows in winter and we need to be responsible with our consumption. So, some questions from the studio, dear colleagues. I'm Vladislav Obuchov, Ukraine Forum, two questions. So, the first one is about uh, providing uh, 1 uh, billion 300 million grivnas for uh, the procurement of uh, mini boilers and generators. Is this money being used effectively um, in the regions free from the enemy? Are there any outsiders in this? And the second question is about uh, the issue of uh, compensation for uh, the uh, priced differences for uh, service providers. It's important not only for them directly, but also for uh, territorial communities. And uh, we heard that it was going to begin soon. So what is the amount and when is uh, this compensation going to start? Thank you so much for uh, these questions indeed um, I I uh, actually wanted to say this in my introductory word uh, there are some additional measures prepared by uh, the government and also local governments as well to respond to uh, the situation and to uh, be ready for uh, the possible disruptions in the supplies since the beginning of summer, we have started the program of stimulating cities in terms of uh, preparation of their equipment. 
there are three types of the equipment, uh, which includes generators, modular, boiler rooms working on different types of fuel, and also the uh, modular setups for water supply. So uh, their intention is to provide temporary solutions in terms of heat and water supply in case of uh, any um, destructions or any repair works for uh, the water to be available uh, let's say for one two or three days necessary to resume uh, the heat supply the water supply or the electricity supply so there are different areas of this work the communities are investing or buying modular equipment. Second, our international partners are quite active. We know that US uh, AID works in 19 regions. Uh, there are UN programs, uh, there are ULEAD programs uh, with support of uh, Europe, and also there is a government program. Some funds are being provided for the procurement of powerful modular uh, setups, powerful modular boiler rooms, and also mobile equipment for uh, the cleansing and delivery of water. So in these four areas, uh, this work is underway and uh, the uh, necessary amount of the equipment will be provided soon. Can they substitute the continuous supply of uh, heat and electricity? Surely not. Uh, they are sufficient to um, partially substitute uh, the needs for a limited time. Uh, they uh, cannot substitute uh, the uninterrupted supply, but these are our backup reserves. Speaking of the differences in prices, uh, this is indeed a very important precondition of the heating season. Economically speaking, the necessary resolutions uh, of uh, the government and uh, some laws by uh, the uh, no, parliament have been passed, and thus 13 billion hryvnias will be provided for uh, this uh, compensation of differences. We hope uh, that uh, this is going to be implemented by the end of uh, this year, but I like to emphasize uh, that uh, the debts uh, that uh, right now exist uh, between the enterprises and uh, Naftegas, they are not uh, the reason for uh, not signing the new contracts. Uh, they are signed, um, the majority of them are signed already, despite uh, the debts. Other questions? Chris, I'm a freelance journalist from the United States. Uh, thank you for speaking with us today. Um, I have two questions. Um, for context, I've been r lately reporting in the Brodyanka and Adrivka uh, regions and speaking with uh, residents who live in apartment blocks, but also single-family homes that uh, have either been destroyed or are heavily damaged. And I'm concerned that they're not going to have adequate shelter for the winter. Um, many of the residents of the apartment blocks are elderly and pensioners, and uh, some of them live alone. And most of them have said that they, A, don't know how to ask for assistance from the government, and B, um, officials from the government have uh, come out uh, occasionally, but not very frequently. And many of them are very concerned that they're not going to receive assistance in time for winter. They have broken windows, broken doors in Borodyanka. Uh, some of the apartment blocks have walls that are being held up by sticks to try to prevent them from collapsing. And they are concerned that they're not going to receive assistance so I'm wondering what programs are in place uh, to address these concerns. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thank you so much. So I, I heard your question in Ukrainian. That's why I'm uh, responding in Ukrainian. Uh, thank you so much for paying attention to these issues. Uh, they are indeed very challenging, and I'm sure uh, the government and uh, communities will cope with this. We will do our best to restore uh, the uh, social uh, infrastructure and housing that was damaged. So for our understanding, uh, just for uh, uh, the four deoccupied regions, we have right now 50,000 damaged or destroyed uh, elements of property. The, the majority of them are houses. So what's being made there? First and foremost, we have launched a couple of programs to ensure the proper uh, housing for uh, the limited period, of course, Recovery cannot happen immediately. It takes some time, it takes some money, so we, we need to be clear about this. And we need to have um, safety and security factors uh, in place for those territories to have stable peace. So I'd like to point out uh, the following. There are some programs for the people that unfortunately found themselves in such situations. First, uh, there is a shelter program, which implies uh, the free provision of housing to Ukrainians whose um, housing has been destroyed. So uh, the families, uh, the owners, uh, uh, who are hosting IDPs, uh, they get um, the compensation for uh, their uh, utility payments. We have increased the amount recently. It is right now 900 grivnas per month per person. Uh, so um, uh, we also have people still staying in the uh, communities. Uh, we have modular housing uh, programs. We are implementing um, uh, 20 such uh, modular camps, 11 of which have been already opened. We are doing this together with uh, the uh, Polish government and by the end of the year we are planning to have at least uh, 20 of uh, such camps in total so uh, they are of course temporary housing for uh, the time of uh, the recovery and uh, the most important uh, thing here is that there are programs available at uh, the level of uh, regions the government has provided in total over 3 billion hryvnias uh, for uh, the uh, recovery and uh, first and foremost for the quick uh, repairs of uh, uh, those infrastructure elements that we can quickly repair such as windows roofs and doors so this is the priority that we have for now uh, there is a social housing program unfortunately its scope is limited but it is in place already so in the deoccupied regions of Zhetomir, Chernihiv, Kiev and Sumy we have this opportunity and uh, some number of people have already uh, received the, the uh, social housing so the, their apartments in which they can live for a certain time while their apartments are being restored and there are also other regional and national programs i am fully aware that we will not be able to recover 
all the housing that has been destroyed before the beginning of this winter. But we need to make sure that every Ukrainian has some housing before the beginning of the upcoming winter. So one option is to have the repaired housing that was damaged. This we, in this case, we imply that there are small repairs. Then there is a shelter program. Uh, then there is a modular camp program and social housing program. So these are the key areas we are working in. Thank you so much, uh, Alexey. Thank you for finding time to join us. Uh, this was Alexey Chernyshov, the Minister for Communities and Territories Development of Ukraine. And let's keep working for our victory. Thank you.